Hello YouTube, this is another QAZWSX2541 Blender tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a teleporter for your game in Blender. So for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm going to be using our FPS tutorial. And this is basically a very basic FPS game right now where you can just simply move around, uh, jump, and shoot things. And I'm going to be using this file uh, to show you guys how to put in teleporters. Uh, the link for this blend file is in the description down below. So the first thing we're going to do is get out of the camera angle there. And we're going to hit Shift A and we're going to add a cone. This is going to be our actual teleporter. So if you have a teleporter, uh, you can use that. So I'm going to be doing 12 vertices here, just because it doesn't really need to be highly detailed. Then I'm going to go into edit mode and just drag the top part of the cone all the way down until it is basically flat. Next what I'm going to do is with our teleporter selected I'm going to go origin, origin to geometry. Then I'm going to drag this away from the player a little bit and put it on the ground. I'm then going to hit shift space to get out of the full screen view there. With our teleporter selected we're going to want to go to the physics tab. We're going to switch this to a sensor object. I'm going to turn on Detect Actors. We're then going to add two game properties. The first one is going to be called Active. This will be an integer. The second one is going to be called 2. Just T-O, spelled like that. And this one is going to be a string. This is the property we're going to use to tell this teleporter which other teleporter to send the player to. So the next thing we're going to do is with our teleporter selected, we're going to go to the objects tab and we're going to rename this to port one. Uh, you can name this whatever you like. Just remember how you spell it. Next thing that we're going to do is we're going to add a collision sensor. This is going to be looking for the property player and we are just going to turn on tap mode and we can leave it named collision with a capital C. The next sensor we're going to add is going to be a near sensor. This one is going to be looking for the property player. And I'm going to do a distance of three. Let's do three. And we're just going to turn on invert here. And we're going to rename this one to away with a capital A, A-W-A-Y. We're then going to add a Python controller and wire that into the two sensors. And then we're going to add our new script. So over here in the scripting window. If you don't have a scripting window, go ahead and make a window there for scripting. I'm going to add a new script. Call it teleport.py. A link for the script will be in the description as well. And we're then going to attach that script to the Python controller. So the first line of the script we're going to do from BGE import logic. On the next line, we're going to do cont equals logic dot get current controller. And on the line below that, we're going to do own equals cont dot owner. So these thir first three lines basically imports the, uh, the logic module for Blender so we can access um, different functions that deal with the uh, game objects. The second line is getting the controller that the script is attached to. And then the third one is getting the object that that controller is attached to. So this is basically getting the teleporter that the player has hit. On the next line we're going to put in scene equals logic dot get current scene. Put the parentheses at the end of that. You can go a couple of lines down or the very next one. And what we're going to put in is obj for object equals scene dot objects open bracket own open bracket apostrophe or quotation mark and two close quotation mark close bracket close bracket. And what this is doing is this is getting the scene and then it is getting an object within the scene. And the object we're telling it to get is whatever we type in 
this property field here. So for instance, if I put in player, if I put in player, it would set the uh, property object to be our player object. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to want to get our player object. So we're going to do player equals scene dot objects open bracket quotation mark player close quotation mark close bracket and at this point we actually need to change the name of our player because right now it's actually named cube in this particular template so we're gonna change its name to player if you already have your game set up we can you can always put in uh, your actual player object name there so on the next line what we're going to do is we're going to do player dot world position equals open bracket and this is where we're going to have a bit of typing to do so we're going to do obj dot world position open bracket zero close bracket comma and so to save time we're just going to copy and paste this part here the obj dot world position zero comma there and we're going to change these second two that we placed to one and two just like that and then at the very end we can take out that last comma and add in another close bracket and the reason we're doing this rather than just sending it to the uh, world position of the object is because we want to make sure that we set the player above the ground so what we're going to do in this last one where it says obj dot world position 2 we're going to add in plus 1 so that I'll set it above the teleporter rather than uh, halfway inside the teleporter the next line down we're going to put in obj open bracket apostrophe active with the capital A just the same spelling as we have down here equals one we're actually going to tab these over here and above those two lines we're going to put in if own open bracket apostrophe active apostrophe close bracket equals zero and cunt dot sensors open back bracket apostrophe collision so this one's going to be the same as our collision sensor that is attached to the portal. Dot positive colon. A couple lines lower then we're going to put in if cont dot sensors open bracket apostrophe away with a capital A there, just the same as our near sensor. Dot positive colon. Then we're going to do own, open bracket, apostrophe, active, apostrophe, close bracket, equals zero. So, basically what this is going to do is if the portal is active, or if active is equal to zero, and the player hits the portal, we are going to set the player's world position to the same position as the object that we put in our text field here. And we are also going to add one to the Z axis so it sets the player up above the portal. Then we are going to set the portal that we teleported to to be non-active. And whenever we are away from the teleporter by a certain distance, which we can set here, we will set active equal to zero which means it is active again. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to duplicate our portal. And there are two final things we must do to get this to work. We must select our player, add the game property player. Oh, I forgot, it's not a capital P. And then we must go to the physics tab for our player and check mark actor. And then what we must do is we must select our teleporter and then in the two property I'm gonna put in port 2 for this teleporter 
And for the other one, I'm going to put in port 1. And then with the second teleporter, we'll see the object is named port 1.001. We're going to go to the object tab and rename this guy to be port 2. So now if we play the game, and I'm just going to play it from this view, we can go, we hit the teleporter, and we land on the other pad. And then, of course, we don't teleport back until we move a certain distance away. And then we can teleport back. So that's going to be it for this tutorial. Thank you guys very much for watching, and enjoy the rest of your day.